Nutrition can either be the strongest medicine or the slowest form of poison. You can heal yourself if you are eating the right foods. You want to check your heck. Get your heck in check. Get your heck in check. Heck is H-E-C, hunger, energy, cravings. When we're eating right for our own bodies, mm -hmm. our heck should be in check. So we have low hunger, meaning that our meals are satiating us and we're not having these, um, we're not getting hungry in the middle of the day and or having these big blood sugar drops. Our energy is stable mm. and good. We're not getting exhausted in the afternoon or we don't wake up feeling sluggish or brain foggy. And then our cravings are low. So we're not having this abundance of sugar cravings or salt cravings, right? We might want a little something sweet. We don't feel controlled by them. So when our heck is in check, all of our metabolic processes can start to function properly. You know, our digestive system, our detoxification system, our hormonal system, it has the the, the raw ingredients to function properly. So let the food be that medicine, let that medicine be the food. Welcome back to another episode of the Todd Durkin Impact Show. I hope you are having a super fantastic summer. Is anyone else loving the summer as much as me? Anyone? Gosh, I love the heat. I love when it's hot out. And uh, we we are in what's called the dog days of summer. We're training. We're eating right. Wait, eating right? We are talking eating right today. We're talking nutrition. And I've got the one and only Melanie Rogers in the house. Melanie, what's happening? Welcome to the show. Hi, Todd. I'm super pumped to be here. She's fired up. Um, 10 years at Fitness Quest 10. Yes. Wow. 10 years at Fitness Quest 10. And uh, in just a moment, we're going to dive deep into nutrition and all that we're doing. I do want to say this. Every time we talk nutrition, I get a lot of questions and I love it. I love questions on nutrition. I want to make sure that anything that Melanie and I talk about today via the nutrition mindset soul set, whatever is on your heart, to fire away the questions this week as you listen in when it comes to uh, super souling your nutrition. So uh, check Melanie's background out because it is awesome. Uh, Melanie Rogers has passionately served for over 20 years in the holistic health and fitness industries. She's a certified functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, a precision nutrition coach, moderation 365 nutrition coach, a seasoned Pilates instructor. Let me let me add a seasoned FQ10 Pilates instructor, holds a master's degree in traditional Chinese medicine, and she's a retired professional ballet dancer. Hmm. Wow. We're going to have to talk about some of these things. She's worked with pro athletes, dancers, and men and women of all ages. However, her passion is helping active moms over 40 with resistant weight loss finally lose the pounds with a targeted holistic approach so they can feel confident, happy, and energetic at any age. Melanie Rogers, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Todd. Love to be here. Man, we talk about moms over 40, although you do work with a lot of moms mm -hmm. over 40. I know you work with guys and dads and everyone, kids and athletes in between as well. But I want to go back to this retired professional ballet dancer. <laughs> Where did you do your ballet dancing? So I studied in San Diego my entire life, classical ballet. Okay. I moved around a lot, different ballet studios, but ended up at San Diego Ballet. Okay. And I would spend summers abroad from the age of about 12 to 17, uh, Boston Ballet, San Francisco Ballet, um, Joffrey Ballet when it was in New York City, 15 yep. years old in Greenwich Village dancing. It was my dream wow. every summer. Yep. Um, and then I spent seven years dancing with the San Diego Ballet. So here locally, and it was fantastic. I love ballet. And how did you eventually get into the nutrition? I mean, nutrition field, but you have a lot of holistic health background between your nutrition, your acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, Pilates. How did, was there an injury? Was there something that happened? You know, I honestly grew up with a lot of digestive issues. Interesting. Okay. I grew up having um, gas and bloating when I would eat cake at a birthday party. When you were how old? Gosh, even when I was like 10, That's, 11, wow. pretty young. I mean, okay. I mean, it... it it definitely affected uh, my confidence level. And then when I became a teenager, I had bad acne. Mm. Those two things sort of uh, precipitated me to look into alternative methods. Yep. I had a couple of influential people in my life, like my mom and my best friend's dad, who was like, why don't you try acupuncture? Why yep. don't you try that? And I just fell in love with it. Huh. I just loved, I've been on harsh medications for those things, for acne and whatnot. And they didn't work and they made my gut issues worse. Interesting. So yeah. I really wanted to find 
from the age of like 16, 17, I was drawn to alternative medicine. Mm. I was drawn to natural medicine. And then at age 20, I went to acupuncture school. Um, I think ballet and being fit and being in the fitness industry helped me want to stay looking the best and feeling the best that I could. Um, and when I went to acupuncture school, I was the youngest person in the program at age 20. Yeah. 20. Age 20. That's young. And it actually became super popular to go into acupuncture school. By the time I graduated, there were a ton of young people, but most people was their second careers and it was my first. So I've just been in the alternative natural medicine world for a long time. I just know I know how well it can help people heal. I know how much you have control over your own health when it comes to what you eat and the supplements that you take and your lifestyle. And it it really started because I had my own gut issues and skin issues that I wanted to get to the root cause of. Well, you've studied it now for decades and uh, (laughs) with over 20 years experience in this, you have a, uh, a lot of great wisdom and experience. I want to talk about that today, but, uh, when it comes to summer, we're in this, we're in the summertime now and everyone wants to talk training beach and they want to talk nutrition. Uh, I mean, it's always obviously important, but right now more so than ever, just where you're at nutrition, like right now today, where are you at nutrition? We're going to, we're going to go into some specifics, but overall, what are you hearing from your clients, the frustrations, the things that are on their mind when it comes to just good overall health, vitality, nutrition? First of all, people are confused because there are so many different diet modalities out Mm -hmm. there, right? You know, keto is the best. Oh, you have to go plant-based. Oh no, carnivore is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And so just navigating all of the noise out there and trying to figure out what my client needs for their own individual biochemistry and for their lifestyle. Look, you should like your nutrition. You should enjoy your meals. So if you think keto is going to give you what you want, but you're miserable on it, then don't do it. It's not for you. There are so many wonderful foods at our fingertips. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be fancy or exotic. We have a lot of good foods at our fingertips. Or expensive. Or expensive, exactly. You just have to know how to shop, what your priorities are, and kind of navigate the middle when it comes to food and make sure that you feel satisfied at the end of the day. Okay. I want to make sure today that we have some very specific, tangible takeaways for our great listeners. Now we got a great, great listenership. And by the way, thank you again for all your comments, all your posts, all that you're doing. You mind right maniacs are absolutely awesome. So I love you. And nutrition always gets great reviews, always that people want to know more. But I want to make sure today that uh, Melanie delivers some very specific things and I, and, and I have some questions. Let's talk about this. You talk about superfoods. Yes. And I want to superfood our mind right maniacs up today. When it comes to superfoods, um, what are what are some superfoods that you should be eating regularly? Okay. So first, let's define superfood. Okay. It's not something crazy exotic that you can only get in Africa. <laughs> yeah. good, good point. I thought I had to travel. Right. right. You thought good. you had to spend a lot of money on something you can't pronounce. Okay. I mean superfoods because they are nutrient dense. They give you a big bang for your buck like that. and you can get them at any time, right? So that was sort of what I wanted to impart when I talked about superfoods were the most bang for your buck, mm-hmm. right? Nutritionally. So I'm going to say it. Um, one of my favorites, which has been getting kind of a bad rap lately, is actually red meat. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Red meat and might be cringe, but organ meat, including liver. So I'm kind of pairing all of those together. Okay. Organ meat. Organ meat. Yes. Now it doesn't mean you have to eat the organ meat if it's kind of What if I don't like liver? You You can take desiccated liver pills and you don't Ah. have to taste it. You want to hear an interesting fact? Sure. Would love that. My mom's name is Muffy. Okay. And the only thing when I think about liver is she says that I was born on liver. I'm like, what do you mean I was born on liver, mom? And Muffy will say the the meal I had before you were born was I had a big plate of liver because I love liver. So she jokes that I was born on liver. I love I that. Hate liver. <laughs> but she says I was born on liver. So every time I hear liver, I'm like, I was born on liver. You should love liver. Liver is like, (laughs) liver is nature's multivitamin. Liver is fantastic. And you know what? A lot of these foods that I'm talking about. um, I like the pill idea. Yeah, the pills are great. (laughs) Look, look, I take the pills. I take the pills. Not going to lie. How many superfoods do you have? 
How many are there? I have seven I want to talk about today. So red meats, the first one. Red meat and liver, um, super full of bioavailable nutrients. We're talking all your B vitamins, Mm. iron, phosphorus, copper, zinc, um, vitamin A in a very absorbable form. You know, amino acids are the building blocks for so much of our body. So we're talking repairing tissue for our ligaments, brain, liver, fingernails. It helps with energy metabolism. We need to have protein. Beef and liver, it's where it's at. You're going to have CoQ10, magnesium, iron, collagen and liver. Let me see this. list goes on. And on. How, how, how much is too much? Like it's the summertime. I've been grilling a lot. I yeah. love grilling. Yeah. Is like five days a week of eating red meat too much? It's a little bit individual. How much you can digest? <laughs> what else are you eating? Are you having burgers with bread and french fries or are you eating you know grass-fed meat with vegetables so right it's all about context and bread is that's bad well i'm just (laughs) it depends depends on the person it's the summer bio individuality here um but yeah you can certainly have red meat several times a week absolutely you can okay what else um okay so bone broth Mm. is one of my other favorites so what is bone broth it's It's not chicken stock. It's not beef stock. We're talking, they take the ligaments, the marrow, the bones, even feet and skin, and they simmer it for days. Mm. So what you get, it's a very traditional food. A lot of the foods that our grandmothers and great grandmothers, you know, served us are really what we're going back to. Those were the superfoods. This is bone broth is a nourishing mineral rich broth, right? It's going to give you, look, the bones and the ligaments, They release all of these compounds that are helpful. Collagen, uh, proline, glycine, glucosamine, chondroitin, right? For our joints, gelatin, it's gut healing. Good for the hair, skin and nails, protein synthesis, bone health. It is literally like this cup. I just drink it in a cup. Like I literally will have in the afternoon. You can buy it. Like there's brands, kettle and fire. You can get it frozen and you can make it at home for much cheaper actually. Cause it can be a little pricey if you buy it pre-made. Okay. Cause I was going to ask, I've bought bone broth in a powder form. Mm-hmm. You can right? do that too. Some taste mm. disgusting. Yes. And some are <laughs> no taste. I prefer the no taste. Cause to be honest with you, cause I've heard bone broth is good for you. Uh, I started at age 48 because I had my first surgery. I hadn't had surgery up until age 48, and then I had my knee replaced at 48. So in the healing process, I was like, bone broth is one of my secret go-tos. Um, but since that time, I've experimented. So do you have, is it typically you recommend bone broth? Is there a certain brand if someone was buying it? And is it powder? And what do you mix it with? Or is it just hot water like I was doing it? Great question. Um, You know, when you make it at home, you can also put vegetables and things in there to kind of help with the taste. But I like Kettle and Fire brand personally. Um, It comes in cartons, so it's uh, not in the refrigerator frozen section. And they have different flavors. Mm. So they've got like a ginger lemongrass one or they'll do like chipotle. So even if you're just going to put it in a little mug and have it as a, an afternoon snack yep. or whatever, it's pretty tasty, but you can also cook with it. So you yeah. can, you can cook rice with it. You can put it in your, in your stews or make it a base for your soups. Okay. So you don't have to have it by itself necessarily, okay. but definitely utilize it. It is such a mineral rich, like right. so good for your gut. I hope that as you're listening in, you actually heed the wisdom of Melanie out of these seven superfoods. Maybe really this week, amp up two or three or four of them and then report back your findings. I'd love to know if you make some improvements in your your diet, what happens. So you got red meat, bone broth. What's number three? Okay, omega-3 rich foods. So this is kind of like a food category, if you will, because it's a lot, you know, a lot of foods omega underneath three this. Omega-3 rich foods. So as Americans, we are not consuming enough omega-3 and we're really over consuming omega-6 where our ratios between omega-3 and omega-6 are off. So what is an omega-3 rich food? Well, wild salmon, sardines, oysters, Mm -hmm. anchovies. Also, you can supplement with a high quality fish oil. Um, For those plant-based, you can do walnuts, flax, hemp, avocado. Um, Even grass-fed beef and grass-fed butter has omega-3s. The reason why you want more omega-3s, is it helps fight inflammation. So almost all of my clients that come to see me one-on-one, I'm usually having them supplement with some extra fish oil because almost everyone comes to me with some type of inflammation. 
Omega-3s are really been shown to help with heart and brain health, improving mood, improving memory, helping with muscle recovery. And basically, Americans are quite deficient. We're not having enough omega-3s. So make sure you're getting your high quality fish in. Make sure maybe you're supplementing with a high quality fish oil and you're good to go. So when you say Americans, all of our mind right maniacs who are listening over in Europe, Australia, all different countries, do they typically not have the same deficiencies as Americans? I would say a lot of Western countries probably are who adopt maybe the more of a fast food type culture or who are eating a lot of seed oils. I would say Europe's probably a little, probably a little better in that front. Mm -hmm. Any place that tends to eat a lot of seafood is going to be better. Um, Mm. We'll talk about this later, but the, the high usage of omega-6 seed oils in this country and our processed foods are really why we're deficient in omega-3s okay. because we have an improper balance of ratio. So you could always supplement fish oils. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I like that. I like that. Number four. All right. Avocado. Oh, love it. Avocado. I, think I eat too many. Oh, you're Is it not. possible? It's you're the not. summer. I know. And they're so What's good the here. Is it the avocado or the chips that I'm eating? Oh, Is Todd. The oh, the Todd. <laughs> Yo, y'all laughing, Where but y'all know where you are right now. You're like, go oh, to chips and chips and salsa or chips and guac. I'm like, I'm eating a lot of guac. It's the chips, I think. Is it the truth? I'll tell you one thing. Yes, it's the truth. No. But if you pair chips with a healthy fat, your blood sugar will have a better response. So it's better to have the guac with the chips yes. than the chips alone. Mm, okay. Get that, right? So you tell me I can continue with my chips and guac. It's all about moderation, Todd. You got to <sighs> pick your battles, right? Now, I'd rather have you maybe a grain-free chip. You know, there's the, those out there, maybe an organic corn. Dep- uh, you know, I honestly love avocado and I love, uh, Melanie's got me doing a lot of avo toast on the gluten-free bread. Oh, Good breakfast. Wonderful. I love eggs. I love avocado, a little guac on the eggs. You, yes, exactly. But when it's sports on in the on the weekend and the chips and salsa with the guac is flowing, I don't know why it's speaking to me like chocolate covered almonds speak to me. Okay, look, it's okay if you just don't go overboard and then okay. you have you know, like it. protein and fat with your carbs. Why is avocado so healthy? Okay, well, first what of all, it? what other fruit do you know that is a healthy fat filled fruit with tons of fiber? You right? know what? I didn't even know avocado was a fruit. I, I, know, right? I figured it was a vegetable. It's a fruit. Wow. Yeah. Am I the only one? <laughs> you are laughing, but like, <laughs> I would assume that avo is a, a vegetable, but that's why we got Melanie Rogers in the house. I hope you're enjoying today's episode, which is brought to you by our one and only Todrickin Mastermind Group. If you're a fit pro listening into today's episode, I want to personally invite you to our Mastermind family. You're like, what the heck is that, TD? Well, that started 15 years ago based on when I read the book from Napoleon Hill called Think and Grow Rich. If you're a trainer who really wants to create maximum impact, the Mastermind is for you. We cover business, leadership, marketing, training, and of course, personal growth. It helps you be the best man and woman that you could possibly be, and also a great coach, a great trainer. So if you're looking to be the best version of yourself, you're gonna wanna be part of the Mastermind Group. We have live retreats, monthly calls, we have opportunities to connect, and we have different systems to coach you in all aspects of business and personal development. My friend, take a look at the ToddRickandMastermind.com site. ToddRickandMastermind.com site. You can sign up for the Mastermind Institute today. You can reach out to me or Coach Frank Pucher, and then you're gonna wanna be part of the family. We got some big, exciting things coming up, and it all starts with the Todrick and Mastermind. Check it out today, ToddRickandMastermind.com. Okay, keep going. Why, why okay, else? so it is crazy high in potassium, like double yeah. than that Need of a that. banana. Yep. Folate, magnesium, vitamin C, tons of antioxidants, and it has soluble vitamins because it is a fat. So A, E, and K, you're going to absorb those vitamins in it because it's a fat yeah. and you need fat to absorb your fat soluble vitamins. Can you eat too much? Yes, you can eat too much with anything. Mm. Calories do matter, right? At the end of the day. And avocado is a high fat food. So you do want to watch the yeah. guac, Todd. Yeah, oh, no, it's, you, you do need to watch it that. It is so good. Avocado <laughs> is. is so, especially right now, the avocados are perfect. Like, oh. Have you ever had avocado chocolate pudding? No. Okay, so you can make pudding out of avocado. You mash up an avocado, half an avocado, put a little almond um, butter in there, Mm. and you put a little bit of monk fruit and cacao powder, mash it all up, 
Oh, it's so we'll have to good. Put that in the show notes. We'll so good. Melanie Rogers' secret avocado chocolate chocolate pudding. pudding in the show notes. Check it out. Number five. Okay, this is another big category: cruciferous vegetables. Hmm. Okay, so what is included in this category? Cabbages, cauliflower, broccoli. Brussels sprouts, but also mm. your dark leafy greens. Okay. So you got your Swiss chard, your arugula, bok choy, collard green. So first and foremost, we all know that these are, you know, high in nutrients, folate, vitamin C, vitamin K. They also contain phytonutrients, which are plant-based compounds that are used to help fight inflammation. Mm -hmm. So it's got all of that. But what's special about cruciferous vegetables, it's known for helping support healthy detox. Hmm. healthy hormone metabolism due to the type of fiber content. So it aids in both phases of liver detoxification. It can help process excess estrogen, which, you know, we poop out our ex excess estrogen and we want fiber to help bind estrogen out of our body, including estrogen mimicking type compounds that are found in plastics and other chemicals that we're exposed to. Mm. So it's not just the estrogen that your body makes, but it's the type of xenoestrogens that you are consuming via just our environment, right? Love it. Love it. So these cruciferous vegetables help detoxify and pull the excess estrogen out. Okay. Also, they're sulfur rich. And so that helps our glutathione production, which is our body's master antioxidant. Hmm. Again, this category of veggies are my favorite because you're just getting a lot of bang for your buck yeah, here. Yeah. You know what I need to do a better job? I feel like this is like confession, Todd, <laughs> nutrition confession. Tell me, Todd, tell me. <laughs> I can do a better job diversifying my vegetable intake. I feel like I always eat the same vegetable, like broccoli. I love broccoli, but I love Brussels sprouts, but I was going to say, I don't make them much. Melly doesn't make them up. So I, we, we don't eat a lot of Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. Yeah. I need to eat more Brussels sprouts. I need to make more cauliflower. I always eat broccoli. Like, why do I always just eat like the same thing? Okay. You brought up a really big factor in nutrition is diversity. Yes. So you guys, we are just not eating enough variety. How though? Including our proteins, right? Are you eating the same protein yes. powder day in, day out? Yes. Are you eating chicken breast yes. day in, day out? We need to diversify everything. I'm not good at that. Do you know you can actually develop food sensitivities by eating the same food over and over again? That's why sometimes people have like, I used to be able to eat this and now I can't. And mm. I used to be able to eat it every day. So you want to eat the rainbow, but that includes your protein sources, right? And True. your protein powders. You maybe have a vegan one, a bone broth one, yeah. a whey one, <laughs> like have variety. I don't know why... I hope y'all are like, the, well, maybe I, I don't hope you're like me, but I hope you're being honest with yourself about <laughs> like, yes, I eat the same darn cup. Well, I guess I had broccoli and I have avocado now and knowing it's a vegetable, even though not it's a, uh, a, cru a cruciferous, uh, a cruciferous, cruciferous, <laughs> cruciferous. That's like my Jersey coming out um, <laughs> on that, but I need to diversify. Okay. I like that. What's we the, all do. Yes. Next one. Okay. The incredible edible egg. Remember that commercial? I do, but it goes back a long ways. I know. I'm that's really like dating way, myself. That's way back. <laughs> I'm really dating I, I myself. I just had a flashback. 13 <laughs> edge drive. Keep going. So egg. Specifically, I want to talk about egg, egg yolk. Egg yolk. Okay. So this is a nutritional powerhouse. Mm. You have B12, folate, calcium, zinc, selenium, iodine, iron, copper, omega-3, all your fat-soluble vitamins as well. All the amino acids, it's full of antioxidants, healthy cholesterol for brain health. You gotta have eggs. How many egg yolks a week? Mm, like, well, did Rocky Balboa have it right by just chugging egg eggs down his throat? Yes, if it's the yolk, but you do not want to consume egg white that is uncooked because it ah, can deplete a B vitamin. So all that stuff I did as a kid trying to be like Rocky Balboa actually hurt me. Yeah, now just, that I'm, I turned out the yolk is fine. Of that. The yolk is fine. Well, there's but many reasons, just, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> so the yolk is fine, yeah. but you want the white cooked. In fact, the yolk is better if it is a little undercooked. So those over medium eggs, you're going to be more bioavailable. You're going to absorb more of the nutrients okay. that way. Um, eggs are great. You want to make sure you don't have a sensitivity to them because some people do. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but eggs are fantastic. Love it. Love it. I love, I love eggs. I do too. Last one. Number seven. All right. The beautiful blueberry. Mm. Blueberries. Power. Yeah. More Powerful. antioxidants than any other food by weight are blueberries. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to have manganese, copper, vitamin K, vitamin C, has fiber. But here's the cool thing about it. 
it's been shown to help protect against neurodegenerative diseases. So it's really good for brain health. So everyone should be having half a cup or a cup per day of blueberries. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, A lot available right now in the summer. There's a lot of big vats of blueberries that are fairly inexpensive. Really the perfect time. And during the rest of the year, honestly, I buy frozen organic Mm. blueberries from Costco, put them in my smoothie. There you go. Love it. Um, It's going to help fight inflammation. It's been known to help cancer, reverse DNA, um, helps curve sugar cravings like blueberries are the jam. And they're a low sugar fruit. So you don't really have to worry about, you know, having them be too high in sugar. So they are fantastic. Love Mm. them. Mm -hmm. Those are my seven. I love it. Well, I'm thinking about these seven. And I like breakfast a lot. And I'm looking at, I can hang out, I can get four of the seven in my breakfast alone. Seriously. I I got my eggs. Mm -hmm. I got the avocado on the eggs, put some vegetables in there. And I, there's a, a supplement, um, Carlson's Norwegian, uh, oil, fish oil, fish oil yep. that that's four of the seven right there. Plus you have blueberries on the side. I, that, that's when I have my oatmeal with the blueberries, blackberries and strawberries. I don't, there's good, but I, I love that little mix. And at night it's the, it's the grill. It's the, it's, it's the meat. It's the meat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like good seven superfoods. Well, if those are things we should be eating, are there one, two or three, like, Foods that we should definitely avoid. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Like, I know some of like the fast food, like that kind of stuff. But I'm talking like right. more like, a, is there an area like, yeah, avoid fast food. Like, we know that. We know that, right? Not, try not to have too much yeah. sugar. We know that. Yep. Um, well, yeah, I, I want to talk. There are more categories again okay. for me here. I want to talk about industrialized vegetable seed oils. Wait, one more time. Industrialized. Industrialized seed oils. So okay. let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Yep. Cotton seed oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, corn oil, soy oil. So these oils were actually, here's a little history lesson for you. They were originally used in soap making process. Hmm. These are industrialized byproducts that have somehow ended up in our plate and they've only been around since the 1900s. Okay. So they're a very new food that we are consuming a ton ton of in this country, especially if you look at any of our processed foods, even some of the so-called healthier foods, all of our salad dressing sauces, they all use what? Vegetable oil, a blend, canola oil, soy oil, corn oil. We're getting a ton of these. That's what's really causing our omega-3 and omega-6 ratios to be so out of whack, not because we're eating all these whole fruits and vegetables that have natural omega-6s, but because we're having so much of these industrialized oils. Let me ask you this. Could you just name the bunch of oils that I should not be eating, but I like to focus on what oil I should be using. Yep. Uh, olive oil always is good. Yep. Yep. But when you cook, I've heard you don't, you shouldn't cook with olive oil. So, so what oil should we be using? If it's like all these don't use, what, what oils are the top oils? That's a great question. Okay. So olive oil and avocado oil are good for more low temperature cooking or at room temperature, especially olive oil, right? Okay. So you put it in your salad dressing. That mm-hmm. is great. They, um, there is a process here, but they require less processing and, um, but they aren't as heat resistant as actually saturated fats. Mm-hmm. So the best choice, honestly, for high heat cooking tend to be saturated fats, right? The ones that are more stable at room temperature. So you have coconut oil, mm. Butter. I usually do grass fed, you know, those free range cow butters, ghee, tallow, even lard. They go, they don't go rancid with heat like these omega-6 seed oils do. Mm. See, these seed oils are super unstable. Okay. They're highly processed. They use high temperatures. They oxidize the oil. They're, they're processed with petroleum products. They use chemicals like bleach. They're even deodorized so that they have a pleasant smell because on their own, they have a yucky smell. <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? <laughs> so stay away from seed oils. Yes, yes. Number two. Okay. Big fish. Big fish. Wait. Big fish. Avoid big fish? Well, you want... To- big fish. Okay. <laughs> Our top predators in the ocean that we like to eat are often full of mercury, unfortunately, with just the way of the world contaminating oceans, the fact that they eat smaller fish. So things like swordfish, shark... I hate to be the bad, bad news here. Marlin, tilefish, ahi, what? orange roughy. Ahi? Darn. If you're having poke bowls yes. multiple times yes. a week, that it might be too much mercury for you. So, you know, the body can take mercury, take it into the blood and actually store it in cells and organs for years. So you may not even know you have a problem with mercury. 
You can have, um, people can have neurological problems, fatigue, brain fog, depression, anxiety, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, allergies, even hair loss. I mean, there's a lot of things that can be contributed, um, can be, the root cause of factor can be from having too much mercury. So look, 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 I love sushi. I love ahi. I, I, I try not to, I try to avoid swordfish and shark. They're probably the top ones. You just want to be mindful that you're not eating these things every week. Because you do want to be, you do want to be I can't weary. stop thinking about my neighbor who just brought me, he went off the coast of Mexico fishing and he got like a 150 pound bluefin tuna oh, so good. and mahi mahi. You're telling me might not be good? I'm telling you to enjoy it, but yes. don't have it five times a day for weeks on end. <laughs> okay, good. I'm going to enjoy yeah. it. I'm going to enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> enjoy it. Enjoy Big it. Fish. Big, Big fish. fish. All right, good, good, good. Is there maybe one more? Yeah, you know what? Whatever food that you are sensitive to, this is where bio-individuality comes, right? So I'm going to say my third category of Hmm. of foods to avoid are what you personally are sensitive to. Now, there's a difference between food sensitivities and food allergies, right? So food allergy, you would, you would know, you could have, you know, anaphylactic shock, you would, it's an IgE response. Um, I'm talking about the food sensitivity where you're getting a type of immune response, it's more from an IgG to IgA immune response. It can be more of a delayed response. It can be a cause of inflammation. It can be um, something where you get a headache the next day or you have digestive mm. upset, but still we can test for it and see, are you sensitive to these foods? Now there are foods that tend to be like the top food sensitivities that you could do a food elimination diet for 60 days and then slowly reintroduce the foods or you can test don't guess and actually test for when these you things. Test, are you saying blood, saliva, stool? Blood. Usually I test food sensitivities in blood. You can okay. do them at the whole food level, or I like to do it down to the peptide level, the protein level, where you get more definitive, less false positives mm. and false negatives. And um, you can know, like, are you really sensitive to gluten, right? Gluten is a big trigger. It, it is linked to many ailments, many immune responses, um, impacts our brain and our gut. But for some people it might be fine. It's better to test, right? Um, dairy corn, eggs can actually be a a factor, legumes. Those are all kind of high sensitivity foods, but you want to know for you personally. Go back to gluten. Okay. Because gluten is one of the most talked about food categories like, or, or sensitivities that people have now, right? I need to go gluten free. Yeah. And I've danced back and forth. I've had episodes where I'm gluten free and then there's episodes where no way I'm not, I'm having sandwiches or having some bread or whatever. Um, talk about that. Like okay. it's gluten. Do you think because of its inflammatory, uh, aspects that it could lead to is quote bad for everybody because of inflammation or only if you're sensitive to it? I, I truly think that testing is probably the best way to understand, but I have to say this. When I've done a, what we call a food zoomer test, a wheat zoomer, a what, every, a wheat, what? a wheat zoomer is a type of test that looks down at the peptide level to see if you're definitively sensitive to wheat, okay. to gluten, to gliadin, to the germ that looks at everything. I haven't had a single client who hasn't had a sensitivity to gluten. Mm-hmm. Now there, there are many high hypothesis on why that is really prevalent, especially here in this country. It could be that we use glyphosate, which um, could actually be people are more sensitive to the uh, Roundup that they're spraying our wheat with. It's because things have been hybridized to where there's more gluten content. So you're actually getting bombarded with this, you know, type of protein more often. But um, the thing is by just going gluten free, and if you're replacing all of your gluten with still lots of grains, lots of refined carbohydrates, you still could have problems. You still could have, but gluten does have, it's been shown to have memory B cells to where the immune system tags it. And you can have the result, you can have inflammation last for up to six months from having just one exposure to gluten. Mm -hmm. So I hate to be the bare bad news here, but, um, moderation is sort of hard with gluten if you actually have a true sensitivity to it because you do have that immune response that can last quite a while and you could have you know uh, a headache a week after yeah. being exposed to gluten and not, never associate it with it you know it's crazy if whenever i've gone gluten free uh, let's say it takes seven days to really get all the gluten out of your body and you i've been gluten free for sometimes months at a time 
if you have gluten, have a glass of wine or have some bread, the next morning you wake up and you feel like you've been bitten by a rattlesnake. You're all puffy and inflamed. And it's like a weird, like, wow, something got into me that was poisonous. And it was typically the you know, the, the gluten, whatever that was, a glass of wine, a beer, or there's, there's no gluten in wine, but there can be in beer. Beer. Um, I have two two beers a month. Is that bad? Depends if you're gluten sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm going to try to get me to drink more wine, but, but it's usually a, a beer or bread. But then there's, those would be my, like, the, the carbs. The I carbs, say, well, drink I know. more wine. I'm like, no, I don't want to drink. I want, you know. Well, and there's nitrates. There's issues with <laughs> wine, too. There's others, you know. Gotta right, so pick your poison. I, I like the conversation. I like the conversation. So you're saying drink more wine. No, that's not what I'm saying, oh. Todd. <laughs> I was just trying to help my mind right maniacs out. And guys, she's not saying drink more wine. Way either. to twist my words, Todd. Gosh. Way to twist my words. I was trying to get you to say yes, you can drink more wine because it's good for your heart. I actually but. purposely didn't even touch alcohol in the foods to avoid, but you know, you're better off, you know, avoiding most of it usually. Used to, okay. Good, 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 good. So uh, those are a few food categories to avoid. Um, and I, I like that seed oils, big fish, and then you say whatever foods you have a sensitivity to. Um, let's just talk when you do what you just advised, Mm -hmm. you you eat more of the superfoods regularly, you, you reduce or eliminate some of those food categories. What would one experience if they really did change their diet? What do they, what's the end result? Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, look, nutrition can either be the strongest medicine or the slowest form of poison. And I did not create that quote myself. Um, so it's like Hippocrates or something. It's pretty good. Seriously. I mean, you can heal yourself if you are eating the right foods. Yeah. Let the food by the, be that medicine. Let that medicine be the food. Exactly. Okay. So you want to, you want to check your heck. Heck is H-E-C, hunger, energy, cravings. When we're eating for longevity and for health. When we're eating right for our own bodies, Mm -hmm. our heck should be in check. So we have low hunger, meaning that our meals are satiating us and we're not having these, um, we're not getting hungry in the middle of the day and or having these big blood sugar drops. Our energy is stable Mm. and good. We're not getting exhausted in the afternoon or we don't wake up feeling sluggish or brain foggy. And then our cravings are low. So we're not having this abundance of sugar cravings or salt cravings, right? We might want a little something Something sweet. We don't feel controlled by them. So when our heck is in check, all of our metabolic processes can start to function properly. You know, our digestive system, our detoxification system, our hormonal system, it has the, the, the raw ingredients to function properly. So mm. that- Get your heck in check. Get your heck in check. I like that. I like this. It'd be like a song. Get your heck in check. We can create one. I like it. So- there's something called circadian rhythms throughout mm-hmm. the day. We have circadian rhythms. They go up and down. There's there's energy swings. Are you saying that if you dial in more of the superfoods that you should be eating and less of the foods you should not, that even with circadian rhythms, you will not hit a mid-afternoon lull? Because one of the things I often hear from folks is, man, it's at like one, two o'clock. I hit such a wall. I want to take a nap. Yes. Okay. What what would you say? Is that the normal circadian rhythm Mm -hmm. swing or is it there's something you're eating in a prior meal or there's something not in check? Yeah. Heck ain't in check. Heck ain't in check. So no meal happens in isolation. Mm -hmm. You should absolutely not have when you're doing things right an energy slump in the afternoon. Now our cortisol levels, when we first wake up and then mid morning, they do rise, right? They peak Mm -hmm. and then they start to go down in the afternoon. That is normal. And we look at that with hormonal testing that I do, but when you're feeling exhausted in the early afternoon, that's usually indication of a blood sugar or dehydration. So what Mm. meal you ate for breakfast is going to dictate your energy and what you crave and what you eat for lunch and then what you eat for dinner. Mm -hmm. So it absolutely is about blood sugar control there. And then of course, the second thing would be hydration and making sure you're drinking half your body weight of ounces in water. So it's kind of a true pronged yeah. approach. Um, did you get enough sleep the night before? I mean, that's obviously a part of it as well. But even if you had poor sleep, if your blood sugar's in check, love it. you're love good. It. Okay. Good, 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 good. What would you say out of all of the folks you work with? And I know there's a lot of women in their 30s, 40s and beyond, uh, but you work with a lot of athletes mm-hmm. as well. What are some of the common 
diet mistakes, nutrition mistakes that people make, if there's a few like common ones, okay. I want to make sure that we can walk away today with not only some great foods to eat and some foods to avoid. And these are some, you know, some great things to reemphasize here uh, this summer as well. But what else would be some other mistakes to really, if I want to dial it in, okay, mm-hmm. I got the big, the macro stuff, pardon the pun, <laughs> macro, micro, all these different nutrients, but common mistakes. Great question. Okay. So I'm first going to talk about not consuming enough salt. Hmm. And I think this is going to kind of be like a what? Because everyone's saying do low (laughs) sodium, do low sodium. So look, salt is our main electrolyte in our body. Our water nowadays with the filtration process Mm. is devoid of a lot of our minerals. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Our soil is devoid of a lot of our minerals because of the way we have been farming. We are mineral deficient. Good quality salt contains minerals. So I'm not talking about just table salt. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about good sea salt that contains a huge amount, like 80 plus trace minerals. Himalayan, Celtic sea salt, all these things. hundred percent. You just listed my two favorites. There you go. Absolutely. My my shelves are stocked with it because Melanie, my other Melanie, (laughs) (laughs) the other Melanie, Melanie Melanie Durkin, uh, she's always with the Himalayan sea salt. It's perfect. Okay. It's absolutely perfect because it has trace minerals in it. And so you're getting the benefit of the salt of the electrolyte. You're look, your adrenals love salt, mm. right? But you don't want to be consuming 99% sodium chloride table salt because it, it they use anti-caking agents, aluminum, bleach, like a lot of that stuff is crap. You're saying adrenals love it in a good way. They yes, need it. They need it. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you also want to look at your sodium potassium ratio, which I look at with hair tissue mineral analysis. But basically, you want to make sure you're eating potassium as well if you're consuming salt because they help balance each other out. Which is too much. So here's the thing. You need to not be eating processed foods and fast foods that contain a lot of that table salt in large amounts. When you're cooking at home, right? Go back to the basics. When Mm -hmm. you're cooking at home, liberally sea salt your food, Hmm. right? I put sea salt in my mineral and my water because I want to add minerals in there. In fact, it adds your hydration power when you put about a pinch per liter of water, pinch of sea salt. Um, You're allowing the cells to actually absorb the water. Mm -hmm. So how much is too much? I mean, bio individuality here, not working with anybody one-on-one, but if you're cooking at home, it's a whole different story. Liberally salt your food, but you know, you need to watch it when you're having all of these processed foods, pre-made foods, fast foods. It's a whole different story. Okay. Next one. Okay. So the big one here, we touched upon this earlier is not eating for blood sugar balance. So when we raise our blood sugar too high with whatever meal we're eating, then we're pumping out more insulin, right? Well, if we're on this blood sugar roller coaster, because what goes up must come down, we that eventually can lead to insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, you know, even diabetes. But on a more of like a simple level, balancing our blood sugar keeps our moods even, keeps our energy even. So the key is, and I know you've had Robert Yang on your podcast, but his little love term you. I love, your your PFF is your BFF, mm-hmm. protein, fat, and fiber, right? Yep, yep, yep. Protein, fat, and fiber for blood sugar stabilization. So you want to make sure there's protein in every meal, a healthy fat, and a non-starchy vegetable. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, if you're having, if you're waking up having a big bowl of oatmeal with no protein, usually that's going to skyrocket your blood sugar and mm-hmm. then it comes crashing down. And then mm. you may have your cravings or low energy. Your heck ain't in check, <laughs> right? So um, you can hack this a little bit by eating your food in a certain order for blood sugar balance. So if you actually eat your vegetables first. Oh, now you're, now you're going to confuse me here. Let's see what we I can hang with you. Here we go. Let's see. <laughs> so this vegetables. Is, this is the order you eat your food for blood sugar balance. Vegetables first, then protein and fat, then your starchy carbohydrate last. But is anyone going to really do that? Well, if like, you're, what do you mean? Talk, like when you say eat it first, like your plate of food. Your plate of food. Yeah. Okay, look at it this way. If you have your plate of food, have a veggie starter. Eat your salad first. Eat your veggies first. It's going to slow down Gosh, the blood me. sugar response and it's going to have a better blood sugar response <sighs> overall so that you can have your dessert at the end of the meal or you can have your rice and you're going to have a much better blood sugar response than if you, you know, had your bread basket at first, which is going to spike your blood sugar right away. Man. It's a little hack. Melanie, uh, Melanie Durkin, uh, she's always on me for 
having my salad last. I'm like, <gasps> I like Europeans. Did they he? eat their salad last. I go to the food that I like first. You're saying I get you. vegetable first. Veggie starter. Hit just the tell broccoli yourself. and the Brussels sprouts yep. first. Yep. Then go to. Protein fat. Then your protein, carb. Okay. Or, you know, okay. just try to think veggie starter at least. Work to do. Gosh, yeah, man. You got to start your salad. Gosh. Salad first. I don't know. Is anyone with me on that? <laughs> like you go to what you want first and you, you get that quote healthier stuff last. But all right. I'll reverse the order. I'll give it a shot here. Try it. This summer. All right. Try it. You can okay. check your blood sugar levels. You can get I'll a little. Get that, it'll get my heck in check. Exactly. Get your heck in check. Okay. Number so this is really simple, but nobody does it. Not chewing enough. <laughs> Seriously. Why is that important? Here's the thing. Your digestive process starts in your mouth. Your enzymatic process begins in your mouth. Think about if you're in a hurry or if you're, you know, multitasking or not focused and mindful mm. on your food, you're basically swallowing big chunks of food. What's your stomach going to do? <laughs> your stomach's not prepared. It has to start stimulating stomach acid. All of a sudden you've got distension and gas and bloating simply because you didn't chew your dang food. Mm, so that's a so big one. Funny. I was just laughing because I, w we just had Luke home from college and having a 19, 17, 14 year old eating dinner. It was like a race. Oh my gosh. The food, there was a plate of food and it was like a shoveling contest of who could eat the plate the fastest. And I actually <laughs> laughed because I just was like, slow down everybody. We can talk while we're eating. <laughs> but yeah, okay, not chewing enough because the mastication of the food also uh, is going to help with the digestion process as well, correct? Absolutely. Um, th there was a movie, it was about uh, Kellogg and there was a song, choo, 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 that is the thing to do. <laughs> Choo, choo, choo. Uh, can't help food you is on good for one. you. Uh, okay. Anyway, so All just right. think about that when you sit down. You'll you'll never forget that song now that and you'll remember to chew your food. And I think the simple thing there is put your fork down and talk to people while you're eating, which makes you chew more because exactly. like it slows everything down, right? And you're actually chewing and not just shoveling into your mouth. That makes a good point of um Switching from a sympathetic to a parasympathetic mode, a rest and digest. When we are relaxed, mm. when we are happy, when we take deep breaths, when we're around loved ones, that actually helps our body switch like to that. digestion mode and we're actually digesting our yeah. food better. Two more. Two more. Actually taste your food. <laughs> taste your food. Freaking taste your food. Okay. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. So something else that I see a lot, especially as people get over 30 and especially over 40, is not taking digestion enhancing supplements as you age. So I'm talking like possibly hydrochloric acid because, you know, our stomachs actually mm. need to be acidic in order to digest food. If you have trouble like digesting meat, oh, I can never di digest meat. I, you probably have too low of stomach acid. Um, en enzymes, you know, pancreatic enzymes, you can take supplements there. Um, apple cider vinegar could even help stimulate stomach acid and is good for blood sugar balance before a meal. Mm. Digestive bitters can help stimulate bile production. So, our digestive fire, they call it in Chinese medicine, it starts to wane after the age of 35. Hmm. And we often, if you if you are feeling like you're not digesting your food as well, I definitely recommend so supplementation. So everyone that's over 35 should be taking some form of a digestive I think enzyme. it's helpful. Okay. I honestly do. Yeah, especially if you have digestive issues, yeah. 100%. So for 20 years, I've always advised people to do the apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. And I used to like literally Rocky Balboa style, five thirty in the morning, down it before my workout. And now Bubs has come out with a new gummy apple cider vinegar, which I love. So cool. Would you say, cause I can't taste it like I did when I was chugging it and it would actually scar my throat. <laughs> right. It was disgusting to taste. I'm like, doesn't matter if it tastes disgusting. It's good for you. Now I don't taste it. Are gummies okay? Like do they, is there anything bad about Apple cider vinegar gummies versus the old, what's it, Mrs. Crags? I think it is like. Oh, the bra, the brags. Bra yeah, whatever whatever. It is, bra I still probably have the back of the bottle in the, in the closet. It's been so many <laughs> years. Uh, but uh, the gummies, are they okay? So I, they're probably fine, but you know, you're looking at um, added ingredients that you may not need mm. to, to make the gummy or are they sweetening it with something? Okay. So, um, you know, Bubs is a great brand, right. you know, I trust them, but I, it's probably fine, especially if you really can't stand drinking. I would definitely dilute it, by the way, if you're taking a little apple cider vinegar, you know, dilute it with some water. Don't just take it completely straight. I, I was cheating by doing that. No? Just, just a little water, just okay. a little bit. All right. All right. You All like right. to have that searing sensation as it go down your esophagus. I like that. Those eggs going down there, you know, Rocky Balboa style. Makes you tougher. Number, what's number five? Okay. So I'm going to go back to not being mindful 
is a really big thing. So being present and mindful is the key to understanding how your body responds to food. Mm. And if you're not sure if a food is a trigger for you or a sensitivity or you're not getting testing, then you need to be present in the here and now. So we talked about heck, right? Having your heck in check. Yep. Another little trick is to stop when you're 80% full and being mindful of when that is. Mm. So if you're looking to possibly lose weight or just, you know, not overeat, maximize your nutrition, not eat more than you need to, you want to stop when you're 80% full. Now, how do you know that? Well, you have to be present. You have to eat slowly and you have to be able to ask yourself, can I, can I eat more? Well, yeah, I can eat more, but, but I could also stop mm. and then be done. So 80% full. And then also, you know, I help my clients with a system called Moderation 365, which is a food psychology hmm. coaching certification program that I uh, help my clients with. It helps, it helps you be more mindful and navigate the middle and kind of end food obsession because so many of us can be thinking about food all the time, obsessed with what our next meal is, maybe even stressed out about what we can eat because we're confused, right? So we try to drop all of our old dieting narratives, old food narratives, and just be more mindful about the body's daily signals, being able to recognize them and kind of navigate the middle and not try to be perfect all the time and actually enjoy our food. It's good. It's all things to help like with mindfulness in general with nutrition. I like it. What's six? Okay. Another problem I see a lot of times, especially with people that want to lose weight is they're drinking their calories. Mm. So mm. the average American consumes up to 400 calories a day, just in liquids. And if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, that's going to be skyrocketing. I mean, I've looked at people's um, chronometer, which is like a food entry system. I have people do, and I've seen some have 20% of their calories come from alcohol. Uh, but I'm also talking about sodas and fruit juices and even kombuchas that are super sweet. We want to watch how much we really consume a lot of calories with our with our beverages. So let me ask you this. You say drinking your, your calories. What if you choose to have a, a breakfast shake that's a greens <sighs> drink, which has my vegetables and I have some of the things that you recommended, but I'm on the go. It's quick. Got a little protein in there as well. Is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. That is fantastic. I consider that a meal, not a beverage that's full of potentially a lot of sugar. So your protein okay. should be nice and balanced. However, I'm scared. I do want to tell you something, Todd. Uh -oh. Do you chew your shakes? No. Okay, well, I want you to start. Why would I chew my shake? Because remember what we talked about? Chewing your food hmm. and getting the enzymatic process starting to happen in your mouth. When we're just downing it and guzzling it, a lot of nutrition that's been pulverized. Yes, it's been partially digested because it has been blended, hmm. but you're kind of bombarding your stomach. I would recommend doing a little mouth movement each time. It gets you a lot of little blueberry marks all over your teeth. <laughs> Y'all are laughing at me right now, but I know you guys don't chew your shakes either. So <laughs> if I see you drinking a shake and not chewing it, Matter of fact, y'all hit me up on the Instagram story, chewing your shake and, uh, and then show your teeth afterwards, show your teeth with a bunch of blueberries on that bad boy. Um, but I do actually, I could do a better job, uh, not in the morning, but like at, at lunch drinking, actually like having a, a better lunch. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like I, I could just actually drink calories. I'm not talking drink like alcohol. Right. I'm talking having a nutritious shake. That's more of a meal replacement. You're saying that's okay. Totally okay. Yeah. Right. I, good. I, you scared I, me. You got me scared. There. I mean more like sugary drinks, God. Cokes, diet Cokes, ah. things like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, two more. What we got number seven. Okay. So not having enough food variety is something we talked about. Yep. But I also don't want you to overcomplicate your nutrition. Mm. Okay. So it's a fine line because, oh, you're telling me to have more food variety, but don't make it too complicated. Well, overcomplicating nutrition is people think they have to make these fancy recipes all the time in order to be healthy, but you really can narrow things down to thinking of it as I'm either going to be taking my ingredients, protein, fat, and fiber and making a wrap, a salad, a saute, a scramble, a soup, mm -hmm. or a shake. Mm -hmm. Boom. There you go. Okay. That's all you need to know. Keep it simple. If you want to have your vegetable and your protein and your starch and have it all in your fridge and you can mix and match and add little salad dressings, don't overcomplicate it. You don't even need a recipe book. Okay. Love it. Final one. So my final um, dietary mistake is just not testing, not ever testing for your food sensitivities or not testing for gut health and hormones if you're having any issues. So I work with functional lab testing with my clients, right? And we get more specific with our nutrition because of bio uh, individuality. So we try to find out what's really hindering your nutrition. You may have mineral imbalances. You may have um, nutrient deficiencies. Obviously we talked about food sensitivities. If you're having 
uh, gut issues you may have gut infections or you may have leaky gut you may have hormones that are out of whack or low thyroid function all that could be affecting your ability to take the nutrients from your food so we want to look at that we want to look at your stress levels and we want to test not guess so that you can be more strategic especially if you've tried everything like say you're eating super healthy and you just have your nutrition dialed in, but you're still getting headaches or you still have acne or you still have bad periods mm -hmm. or whatever it is. There's something missing. There could be testing that could shed light on maybe what's going on, like root cause of factors so that you can maximize your nutrition even more efficiently. Who should someone see to get tested? How do you get tested? So I run tests myself as a functional diagnostic what nutrition practitioner. Um, I work virtually. So uh, the tests can basically, most of them can be done at your home or like a lab core if it needs a blood draw. Okay. So um, functional diagnostic nutrition practitioners like myself, nutritionists, naturopathic doctors, they all, we all run lots of similar tests right. and can be virtual. Yeah, no, I've known of FDN for a long time, almost two decades, functional diagnostic nutrition and studied it and, and know you do great work, Melanie. Awesome. Um, any final advice that you would have as we wrap up today? Uh, if you like someone's really struggling, like, man, just give me one, two or three things besides all these great things. Anything else on your mind, final advice when it comes to nutrition and really super souling your nutrition? So your mindset matters. Mm. You know this, Todd, more Preach than anybody. To Preach. You, you have to get in a, in a, parasympathetic mode of rest and digest before you eat. If you could do one thing, hmm. slow down while you're eating, take deep breaths and listen to your body. Your body is so intelligent. It knows when it's being fed foods that it likes and when it doesn't start to listen to those messages mm -hmm. because really no one knows your body as well as you. So yes, testing can be helpful. Yes. Working with a practitioner like myself can be super helpful, but it doesn't alleviate the fact that you need to take responsibility for your health and you need to learn what your body signals are and what it's telling you. When you get your test, does it give you the green, yellow, and red foods? It does. So green, eat, yellow, be cautious, red, stay away from because you're allergic to it or you have a food sensitivity to it. Uh, I wouldn't say allergic because that would be an IgE response, but yeah, that you're sensitive to it. And you know, the, the goal is to heal and seal the gut and work on gut health and work on all the things that we find with lab testing so that you could possibly reintroduce some of those foods yeah. back in or at least go in rotation with them. Yep. What's one thing that you're doing this summer that's really, really like you're dialed in and doing this really well, nutrition wise? I would say that I'm sort of focused. So I always get protein every meal, right? Okay. I'm big on protein, but I've been a little bit more focused on getting enough fiber. You know, uh, with some of my digestive issues, I can't blast myself with too much plant fiber. So I've been really dialing in on chia seed pudding, hmm. on sea moss gel in my shakes, getting like some pureed pumpkin, like really good gentle fibers. And I've just been very focused on protein and fiber and I've been feeling great. Mm. Love it. I hate to bring this up, but I need to. Uh oh. Hormones. Dun, dun, dun. Hormones. I wasn't going to go there, folks. I wasn't going to do it. But just real quick, are there any foods that we should avoid uh, that have a, a hormonal effect um, that uh, may throw your body out of balance? Is there one that you'd say avoid this or eat this because it's going to actually help uh, you know equal out hormones? Any, any foods to eat or not to eat? Just I, okay. I have to, cause I'm going to get a lot of questions and please keep them coming. But hormones always come up. Hormones always come up um, because the, uh, hormones are chemical messengers that do almost everything in the body. Mm -hmm. So they're super important. And you're not just talking about your estrogen and progesterone. You're talking about so many, so many things that affect your body. So yes, first of all, sugar. I mean, we didn't really touch upon sugar, but having too much sugar in the form of refined carbohydrate and actual sugar and high fructose corn syrup, terrible for our hormones, right? Sugar's the devil. I mean, it really is. It really <laughs> is. I mean, have, have sugar in the form of fruit or mm. dark chocolate mm. and, you know, things like that. But so I would say dark that'd be the number one. wine's good. Are we back to the wine again, Todd? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all, right, all right. Okay. So, but, um, all of my superfoods that I recommended are really good hormone balancing foods. They just are right. Yep. But some other ones I'd like to maybe talk about that are good for hormones raspberries. Raspberries are great for hormonal health. First of all, Todd, they boost testosterone in men. Why are you looking at me like that? 
<laughs> just just in case uh, you want to. <laughs> blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. I said that's okay. the more that's you got your thing. Things going okay. Okay, so um, but raspberries also help excrete excess estrogen for the body. Remember, I talked about how we get bombarded with xenoestrogens and regular estrogen that needs to be excreted from our body. Raspberries help take that out of our body sufficiently. Same. So raspberries get you the big T. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. Okay. Raw carrots. I counsel a lot of my clients to have a raw carrot per day because of the unique indigestible fiber that helps remove excess estrogen from the body. Again, you can kind of see a theme here. It's important to make sure mm-hmm. that we are excreting our estrogen properly. It's not recirculating. Mm-hmm. Um, you want another okay. one? Well, one more. Cherries. So cherries actually help build melatonin. So that's Mm. a different hormone that we've been talking about that can help improve your sleep. It also blocks aromatization of testosterone into estrogen, which I won't get too chemical um, or too technical. I mean, but you can have testosterone that changes into estrogen. You can have too much estrogen. And basically the cherries help not that not happen. Mm. Plus they're delicious. Plus they contain a lot of magnesium for us, uh, which is good for stress and good for sleep. So cherries are good to help you sleep. I like the melatonin supplement. I don't eat cherries very often. I don't know. I just don't eat a lot of cherries, but I guess I could add that this summer. Costco has organic um, sweet cherries frozen and they're great to add to your smoothies. Here's the bottom line with all this today. Uh, Seven superfoods. We can all dial down, amp up our superfoods. Uh, Melanie, you gave us some great food categories to avoid, which we could be better at, and the diet mistakes. Um, I think, like anything, this is some really great information. Some of it is a reminder, some of it is new, and some of it's just an affirmation that we got to make sure that we stay dialed into some of the best practices uh, as well. So, If someone wants to follow you, find you, what's the best place they can do that and where? Perfect. Okay. Well, my website is melrogers.com, M-E-L-R-O-G-E-R-S. Okay. And then on Instagram, I'm melrogerswellness. So I'd love for you to follow me there. And then um, on my website, you can sign up for my email list. You'll get a free three-day hormone recovery plan where you get meal plans and tips and tricks on how to optimize your hormones. But yeah, melrogers.com is the best place. I do free calls for one-on-one inquiries on my my program, Metabolism Reboot, where I work with people one-on-one with lab testing and nutritional counseling and uh, protocols. Well, you're doing a great job. I follow you on Instagram and see all the great content you're putting out there. So keep up the great work. Thank you for enlightening enlightening us today on nutrition. Um, I know this has been your heart and soul for a long time, and you're working with a lot of clients uh, to help them with vitality, energy, good health. And many times uh, we don't realize... Uh, what we have until we don't have it anymore. We know that nutrition plays a major role. Five, six, seven times a day, we have the, the ability to either improve or really mess things up. And every time you open your mouth and put something in it, there's a chemical reaction that does happen, good or bad. And uh, the content and information you provided today all was to help the uh, hormonal and chemical response that happens when putting uh, some nutrition into our mouth. So Melanie Rogers, thank you uh, for being here today and uh, all that you do for Fitness Quest 10, for the world of all your stuff. So have an awesome day. Peace, God bless. Thank you so much, Todd.